Lekker om terug te weer. Zijn allemaal van jullie te zien. Great to be with you once again. We have been traveling quite a bit and ministering quite around South Africa. Raag om Zuid-Afrika en prijs die Heer, is goed. Amen. Give your neighbor a quickly friendly hug. Sê vir die lekker om saam met jou hier te wees. I would also like to welcome our, our brother Ivan. Please come and stand quickly next to me, Ivan. Spreeko. And Ivan is from Mozambique. He's a missionary in Mozambique. He's very short. <laughs> but we love you anyway. So Ivan is from Mozambique and uh, we were with him in, was it in June? June? We were in June with them and um, praise God since we were with them, they planted a new church wow. and uh, about 30 people, right? Attending um, from June till now. And so we're really excited. Are you foot in him? Come stand, come stand. He can't. So he had the record out and seen. I said, let's stand this side so the shorty can be on the picture. <laughs> no, I'm feeling you like I just I said know. the short guy, not shorty. <laughs> but anyway, so Ivan has been with us for this week and I've been a bit exposed to all the different ministries in and around church. So um, next time, hopefully his wife and son will be with us. And uh, we praise God for him and uh, yeah, for what God is doing in Mozambique. Can we give the, him a hand? I hope you guys, I hope you have seen the whole week behind the rug. Who did the 10 kilometer mountain hike yesterday? Stick your hand up. Well, good for you. Well done. We thought about you while we were catching fish. And uh, we thought, may the Lord be with you. May you live long and prosper. <laughs> <laughs> So I told Ivan, just be, ca be careful of mambas and all the bus in the stuff there. There's no good thing in the African vote and boss. And so we just said to him, listen, my brother, just be very, very careful. Just be very, very careful. And so they have steps to go Henry. Good show, man. I'm proud of you. So last week, Johan started with us speaking about, Johan had us about entering new seasons. Amen. Uh, how many guys were here last week? We was here so last week. And God did new seasons for us. For, and, and I believe, I believe that the Lord will in us hope will face the glory will bring. Amen. You know, God is not moved by emotion, He's moved by faith. Without faith, the Bible says, it is impossible to please God. And He that comes to Him, and He that now comes, Hebrews 11, he must glory that He is. Verse 6. They must believe that He is. Come on, tell your neighbor, believe, believe that He is. And that He is a rewarder of those who diligently. Did I tell you the story about the traffic officer that stops the pastor driving too fast? He said to the pastor, listen, you're driving 80 in a 60 zone. And the pastor says, I'm just trying to keep up with the traffic. He says, what traffic? There's no car on the road. See, see, I'm lost. <laughs> see, Nick is lost. <laughs> they all left. I'm the last one. Like the last the you know. And so, uh, don't be like that guy who's lost. Amen. Amen. The Bible says you'll be the head and not the? Amen. You'll be first and not? Lost. Last. God has got a good plan. God has a good plan. He's got a plan to prosper you. A plan to give you a hope and a future. The one translation says it so beautifully. It says to give you an expected outcome. God has an expected outcome. Hello? Nee man. Wat het gebeurt terwijl ek weg was? Ek moet met Johan praat. Lijkt my jylle begrafnis gehad. Ja. All right, so please open your Bibles with me this morning. We're going to start um, in the book of John chapter 14, Johannes 14. And it's very well, a very well-known portion from verse 16. And um, 
we're going to read there. And so I uh, believe Johan started with speaking about, Johan het met julle gesels oor die beginsel van die verandering van seisoen, and that every year we, we come to a place and we celebrate, and, and, and actually the Jews celebrate it, but before Israel was a nation, God gave an ordinance, God had an ordinance on Moses gegeen, om te sê, hierdie sal die begin van daar wees, this will be the beginning of days, and that's a spiritual season starting. That's not about a physical thing, it's about a spiritual season starting. And every year, you know, God in his infinite wisdom from the beginning put everything in place. So it says when God created heaven and earth, he gave the sun, moon and stars so that we can understand and know the times and seasons, the days, and, 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 and walk in it correctly. So there's, there are times and seasons of God. And we need to understand them. Correctly. Ons moet het raag verstaan. And when we work with God, wanneer ons saam met hom werk, we will have the full benefit of what he does. Ecclesiastics 3 verse 1 says, there is a time and a season for every activity under the sun or under heaven. Daar is a tijd en a seizoen vir elke ding onder die hemelen. My waterborrel skit as ek die tafel tref. Dat is een tijd in een seizoen voor alles wat God doet. Dat is een tijd in een seizoen in jouw leven voor, voor dit wat de Heer wil doen. Nou. And so if we work with what God is doing, if, if the Israelites would understand, if as hulle geweet het, to Jesus op aarde was, if they would have discerned the time and the season correctly, they would never have crucified the Lord. They would have never partook of what transpired. But because they did not, they missed out on what God was doing in their day. Did you know that in that portion where Jesus enters Jerusalem and he starts to weep, he goes and sits down across the tombs of the prophets in the valley of Kidron and he weeps for Jerusalem. He weeps for Jerusalem. As he sat across the tomb of Isaiah who was killed by evil king Hezekiah because he didn't discern the Lord in the prophet. He killed him. He saw him in two. He had him in two years. But then he got his stem. And Jesus wept at the tomb. He wept for Jerusalem, saying, If you would have just understood your time and season. So as we enter in this year, here in year, 5, 7, 8, 5, 5, 7, 8, 5, that's the number of the Jewish year. That's how it was numbered from the beginning by Moses. But for us, we're entering 2025. 5, 7, 8, 5, sorry, it's the year. And I believe God, in His infinite wisdom, has prepared great things for us. Amen. This year, the 5, 7, 8, 5 literally means... The very breath of God be upon you. That betekent letterlijk dat die geest van God oor jou kom. Waarachtig oor jou kom. En oor jou leven. And so I believe and, and I, I actually see where the time is. So we're going to rush a little bit. But we'll be unpacking this over the next few weeks. Because I believe there's so much. There's so veel wat die heilige geest wil doen in ons midde. There's so veel wat die heilige geest in en dier jou leven wil doen. There's so much that the Holy Spirit wants to do in and through your life. And that this is the season for it. That God wants to use you. I was putting in fuel in Lichtenburg at the fueling station. Weet hulle, ons gooi een beetje brandstof in. And me and the, and, uh, the pastor is there. You know, on Monday morning for breakfast, I had oxtail and scrambled eggs. My goodness. I got up in the house to rain. I got up in the house to rain. The land of oxtail and eggs. Anyway, so as we were filling the car, the presence of the Lord came upon the pastor. He started to laugh. <laughs> and he car under the, under the spirit. Hy begin eerst bykie gegel, toe meer gegel, toe begin hy baie, en later kan hy nie meer nie. Ek sê, van moet net nie my kaarse dash oorskoppie. 
En dit is een oud oom, die oom is 74 jaar oud, die pastoor. And he is under the power of the Lord. And then the fuel guy, the yogi, petrol yogi, what's it in English? The fuel attendant fell over. And we first had to drive out a demon. And on this side, there was the Holy Spirit working. And on this side, God was freeing a man who had a, the demon in him. And I thought, that's exactly almost the picture of this coming year. The Greek word for 5785 is the year of great fear, turmoil, and anxiety. Die wereld gaan dier groot angstighede gaan. Friends, the Bible says that there will be a time where people will have heart attacks because of fear. Before the end will come. Die wereld gaan dier groot turmoil gaan. But we as believers, in the, in the Greek the word literally means... 5785 comes from the, the literal word where in the beginning, after Adam and Eve sinned, that's Genesis 3, God came and clothed them. And you know, Jesus says we must wait to be clothed with power from on high. God will your life have a job clear with his power and good. And as we prepare for this season, let's quickly read. And we're going to recap about the person of the Holy Spirit in the next few weeks. The importance is so many things that the Holy Spirit does in the life of a believer. And it's really so important that we be in step with him. So starting in John 14, verse 16. And I will ask the Father, it's Jesus speaking. And he will give you another advocate. Hy sal jou een ander advocaat geef, een ander voorspraak geef, to help you and be with you forever. The word help, there is the word parakletos. It means what? Fills the whole thing up with the goodness. Helps in the, help in the most complete sense of the word help. Ek is wat ek hier terug een pap wil gehad. En, en die was ons, ek is in shape, jy weet maar die babbel is net in die middel. En, en nou, nou om die taaier los te kry, is, is nog hulle oefening. And you know, a guy stopped behind me and said, Pastor, kom ek help jou gauw. Now you know, let me tell you this kind of help. Hy spring al in, hy maak die taaier los, hy jack hom op. Ek sê, wat kan ek doen? Hy sê, sta net hier so, dan skyn die so nie direk in my gezicht. <laughs> ek sta daar, hy dree laai taaier met een groot joy. Hy sê, weet jy, ek het die koeler in die kar, hy haal vir ons elke nou kouk uit, ek drink kouk, staan in die son, hy rui die taaier, ek sê, parakletos. Dem is perfect help. Ha? Hy rui laai taaier met die smale, maat, pompa, laai die aan die en sê, ek laai my hore, jy wil by jou huis af recht gemaakt, moet nie waar nie. Ek sê, prijs die heren vir jou betaal. Wat is jou naam? Hy sê, pastoor, ken jy my nie? Ek sê, mm-mm. <laughs> nee, maar ek is ander, ek is ander nou bekend, en sê, sê nou, sê, maar ek is ander die kerk, ek sê, oe, maar, ek is jammer, ek ken nou nie plaas, en sê, maar ek besoek nog by julle, so jy sal sien, ek sal meer kom, ek sê, dis recht so, ek moet jou bykie meer sien, dan sal ek jou ken, sê, recht so, weg, en sê, volgende dag laai die taar af, by die huis, parakletos, God a helper, I believe that in 2025, we will see the help of God. As believers, our lives will dramatically change. And we need to learn. Ek en nie moet verleer om a verhouding by die heilige geest te hee. Iemand het een dag gesê, you know, it wasn't the last shout on the seventh day that dropped the walls of Jericho. It was also the daily walk. And we need to learn to daily walk with the Lord, the Holy Spirit. We need to learn to fellowship with the Lord. We need to learn that we have a head, agony. We have an advocate. We have a helper that will never leave us. The next verse goes on to say, and it's the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know Friends, I want to ask you about your relationship with God, the Holy Spirit today. 
And Jesus expects us. Jesus verwacht dat ek en u een verhouding sal hee met God die Heilige Gees. That we will have a relationship with the Lord, the Holy Spirit. That we will know Him and lean on Him. He wants to lead you. He wants to guide you. He wants to clothe you with power. He wants to show you the goodness of God. According to Romans 8, He wants to intercede for you. But you and I need to make an effort to know the Holy Spirit. En ons allemaal kom uit die traditionele achtergrond waar ons bang is om geeste te ken. Hallo? Vraag die persoon langs je, wat sy geest ken jy? <laughs> what spirit do you know? I'm not speaking about spirits, not Johnny Walker and those kind of stuff. At least not that. That's what I go there. I'm speaking about spirit. Jesus expects us to know the Holy Spirit. But you know Him, for He lives with you and will be in you. I've been married for almost 20 years. And my wife is still a mystery. <laughs> Hello? I'm still not sure how she drinks her coffee. Because it changes every day. Rara, but take your mug, I can put you in the stick and say, I can't even go out. 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 What was that you were out? And she said, I drink chai tea. Then one day I can drink chai tea and she said, Who drink chai tea in the morning? So I found a solution to that problem. I stay in bed until she makes coffee. I can't even do it until I'm asleep. I can't even do it until I'm asleep. I stay in bed until she makes the first cup of coffee. And first in my song. I make that not only for your coffee in the morning. You don't have to go to the church, Jockey. I can give you a lot of reasons. I know who makes the coffee in your house. So Jesus has an expectation that you and I will have a relationship with God, the Holy Spirit. And we all come from a background. We all come from the background where there is anxiety and fear for the spiritual realm, the wrong. We all come from a background where we're afraid of false prophets. We're afraid of false spirits. We're afraid of demons. But you know that the word says in the book of Luke, chapter 11, Jesus says, if you ask me for the, um, for the uh, if you ask me how much more will I give you the Holy Spirit? Amazing. If you are a um, you know, evil father, sorry, let me quickly read the verse. Luke 11. Luke 11, verse 14. And it's interesting that this portion just falls after um, the eye is the lamp of the body. Is it 11 to, uh, just before the lamp of the body? So 11 to 13, I'm looking for it. There it is. So I said, you ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And the one who knocks, for the one who knocks the door will be opened. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven? Who felt the mercy that your Father in the heaven, the Heilige Geest, give for you? So Jesus implies that. We should be knocking to receive the Holy Spirit. We should be asking to have the Holy Spirit. And we should be seeking yes. Him. Yeah. His implication is that God wants us to live with His Spirit. Amen. And this is a season 5785 five, where we will see great manifestations of the Spirit of God. Praise and listen, not in the... <clears throat> 
how, how to say this without offending someone. You know, oftentimes we follow, soms volg ons wonderlijke leraars en predikers, nie? Soms volg ons manne en vrouwe van God wat voorgaan, en is wonderlik. Soms volg ons selweiers en leiers, maar hier is nie net vir die leiers in ons leven nie, hier is vir elke le- levendige, wedergebore, geestgevulde kind van die Heere. Dat God wil dat sy geest in ons levens op een boonnatuurlijke wijze manifesteer, omstandighede verander, intree waar jy nie kan intree nie. He wants to work and manifest in every believer's life. He wants to show himself in your situation. So, every area in our life, elke area in ons leven, where there's hopelessness, where there is destruction, where there is discouragement, we can invite the Spirit of God he is the very breath of God. I, I'm not going to get to the whole portion this morning. But did you note know that he says, just the previous verse, verse 16, he will never leave you. He'll be with you forever. How many of you, how many of your friendships lasted forever? Wie van julle het vriendskappe hier wat meer as 60 jaar kom, 50 jaar kom, meer as helfte van jou ouderdom kom? Very few relationships that we are involved in last very long. But Jesus says, He will be with me always. And it doesn't matter what I go through. He will never leave me. I have access to the very breath of God in it work. And you know, the enemy, we have an enemy. We have an enemy that plans destruction and death. Last year, this 1st of October, guys, we spoke about the previous year. And we said that in this year, there will, there's, there, there will be conflict. And around Israel, conflict will be seen. Yeah. Do you guys remember? Seven days later, Israel was attacked by Hamas. Yeah. And since then, the world has gone into turmoil. The world will still be in turmoil. But we will have the Holy Spirit, the person God sent to clothe us. The person God sent to be with us. To speak om in ons situasie, in ons omstandighede in te praat. Tuesday night at our home cell, just before the home cell started. A few weeks before, one of the members of the cell shared a situation they are in. And that they have not had an increase at work for so many years. So I said, I asked them, well, what number do you have in your heart that you feel that the Lord says is what is His heart for you? So they said they haven't asked the Lord. So He told them, listen, let's ask the Lord together. Come on, Friday. Because he, he is our, he's our advocate, right? I mean, as jy nou jou baas toe gaan en sê, luister, ek dink is bykie tyd dat jy my pay vir hoog. Hy sê, jou arrogante man. Wat dink jy, wie die is jy? Anyway, so he said, well, listen, this is what he feels. And they felt, they, they actually, they work for the same company, him and his wife. They deserve around about 30 to 40% increase on their salary. I said, well, let's bring this to the Lord. So we prayed. And we said, God, you are our advocate. You, he is ons voorspraak. You speak on our behalf. And they know if they would address this with their boss, it would be a big problem at work. But we ask you. 
So this Wednesday before sale, the husband sat next to me and he just touched me and said, listen, when we prayed for our increases, do you remember? He said, yes. He said, our boss called us in on Tuesday. And he gave each of us a 50% increase on our income. So I said, well, God thought you deserved more. <laughs> the other, God considers his people if you ask him. We have, ek en I, het a voorspraak. And you and I need to learn to trust the Holy Spirit. Too often times, weet ek, ek is van nature so, ek hou nie daarvan om probleme te los nie. Wie van u doen dit? Jy wil om nou uitsal. Ons moet om nou praat, nou klaar maak, die andere is jy so. Ja, ek hou nie daarvan nie. But I had to learn to trust the Holy Spirit to resolve issues. I had to learn, you know, oftentimes being in a prophetic church, people think someone told you. <laughs> and you don't know things, and I get all the old people and say, you are a clump of your back. I say, huh? Who mean you? Yeah. You have now your more over this and this. My cell had it, you see, I said, so, young, I don't know what this cell is. I'm not sure what it And that person that morning was so upset, I've not seen him for four years now. And I still re don't really know what this is about. I wasn't in church for four years. And this week on Wednesday, we walked into each other. My natural tendency is to call and say, Kwan ons nou maar gesels, ek weet nie wat gaan nie aan nie. But every time I try to call the brother, he just put the phone down. So I just said, Lord, the word says, as far as it depends on you, live in peace with everyone. So I, I have tried to live in peace. I don't know of anything, but I give it into your hands. And this week, I walked into the brother and said, yeah, is he not going to do it I said, no, no, I live in, and I said, well, he says, I owe you an apology. I accused you of so much stuff, and the Holy Spirit convicted me. Where I live now, there's only three or four churches, and none of them are charismatic renewal churches. So I sit there every Sunday and, and miss you guys. I miss the fellowship and the friendship. See, the Holy Spirit convicts of sin. I mean, the Holy Spirit deals with you. When the Heilige Geest for you say, it's time to stop smoking, then it's time to stop smoking. And He sets you free. And there is no withdrawal, what is it, untracking symptoms, withdrawal symptoms, because it's the power of God that delivers you. So I want to say to you, what, what from here, start to pray and invite the Holy Spirit into your situation. When you enter into your business or into your workplace, misschien denk je, yes, ek kan nie meer hierdie vrou of hierdie man hanteer nie. As ek aan hom sê, dan krijg ek gedagtes van, ja! Ek sien al prentjies van dogboxes. Ek sien, ek, ek sien al hoe slaap hy weer op die bank, of sy weer. Invite the Holy Spirit. As jy al, jy jou dink aan nie, ek kan die kindse boutvelle aftrek as hy by die huis kom. Hmm. Invite the Holy Spirit. <laughs> ah? Jy denk, vandag gaan ek vir die vrou sê. Vandag sal my baas weet hoe ek oor hom voel. Ah, no, no, wait. The Holy Spirit, come into this situation now. <laughs> when you feel treated unfairly or unjustly, invite the Lord. This is a year specifically 
where we will see the manifestation of the Holy Spirit to restore. And you mag ook hier sit vandag, and you het all the reels in the book oor tree. And you het rondgespring soos a bok. And rondgehaarklip in elke veld. And elke frot kiem opgetel. But when you come to God, He restores and heals and cleans. And He gives us the ability to stand in faith and see the goodness of our Father. I believe that as we speak about the breath of God, Maybe there's a relationship or a friendship. Maybe there's people around you or your life. Misschien is er mense om jou leven en jy het so hard probeer om hulle recht te help en het het altijd conflict geword. En jy het so hard probeer om goeie inspraak te gee en you know it feels like it fell on deaf ears. Zoe, jy het vir jou verjaardag opgestaan. Weet jy? Ok. Ek toch nou net uit jou naam gesê, maar ek kan nie uit jou opgestaan. Halleluja. Allow him, ask him to come into your situation. And he will. He will. He will. The, yesterday we were on the dam fishing on Obasini Dam. And I listened and we shared some testimonies together with the brother on the dam. And it was so much fun. And listen, let me tell you, I was so encouraged. I was so bemoedig, because you know what the wonderful thing is? That's the sy lewe van elke kind van die Heere. There are testimonies of the goodness of our Father. And in this coming season, we'll be unpacking, walking with the Lord, expecting God, verwacht dat die Heere wonne werke om jou leven gaan doen. Verwacht dat die Heilige Geest mense om jou leven gaan aanraak en verander, that He is able to heal, He is able to bring to life. I remember my first trip to Uganda, very first trip, you know, and we were, we were preaching, uh, Jaap, ek dink nie, jy was saam, I think I was that one alone. And there was a, a church in the middle of nowhere, to ek van die bakkie afklim, to hardlip al die mense weg. They all ran away, took few hours to gather them back, and tell them I'm not a witch doctor. And I, I remember, I shaved my beard the next day, because the children wanted to feel it. And my face was so sore, from the pulling of the beard. So when we started the service, it was already, weet jylle, dis die air-condition so sien, it's blooming hot. So I was, ek het gelijk of ek geswem het, met my kleer, I was, it was so warm. And I remember when we started to worship, and, and as we started, I just started to preach, and there was a woman at the back, who started to scream, and shout. And you get ons is recht for elke, and, and in our mindset, when we travel in Africa, you're ready for every demonic manifestation, right? So I'm ready. The high geest gaat ons vandag. And this lady was screaming, and the baby, she had a small baby in her arms, and the baby was screaming more. And uh, there was a bit of confusion. But when the translator started to speak, I, I just cried. This lady gave birth to this little boy the day before in a clinic close by, in the middle of nowhere, and the baby boy died. And she spent the night there with a dead baby boy on her chest. And the next day she was walking home with this baby boy wrapped on a sling on her chest and she heard the worship so the worship gehoor and she had gelopen to the church 
And she stood inside of the door, having no song to sing. She was afraid of what her husband will do to her when she arrives with a dead baby home. She had fear. And she stood there in the worship. And she cried. And during the worship, the baby started to drink on her breast. And God restored her child to life. And you know, where the presence of the Lord is, there's life. Where the Spirit of God is. Ezekiel stands in a valley of dry bones. God brings His Spirit and life. You might have a dead situation today. You might have a situation today that you think, this is the end. And this is the first thing that you think, maybe you can't do it anymore. Maybe you can't do it anymore. But the point was, was she was with a dead child for basically 24 hours. And God gave life. What area in your life do you need God to breathe on today? This morning in the intercession, without anybody knowing my notes, Uncle Chris had a vision of an orange scarf coming into the church and it was the spirit of God or the breath of God that came in. The color over 5785, the Hebrew color over this year is orange. Blood orange. A very specific color. It's blood orange. The spirit wants to fill your life. God will with his geest in your life back. And I don't care how old you are. Abram started to know God at the age of 80. Yes. And then he started to live in his school. God is not into age. He roep for David, wat 14 jaar oud is, en hy maak om a koning. Wie van julle is een 14 jaar oud, die beheer die baas van die land maak? <laughs> ek het een 15 jaar oud. I tell you, it will be a very different South Africa. All the criminals will be, they will be dead. You know, Brother Ivan is a testimony. He was hijacked in Nelspruit when he came into South Africa. Let me tell you, he was held up. He was hijacked. His car was taken. Last week, Friday. Not this, not this, the previous one. I remember Des calling me very anxious about you. He said, you need to, we need to pray. So I said, Jesus, just help. And here he is. And he came with his car. This morning, what area in your life? Maybe you feel you've, there's just been failure. God takes a failure and he makes him a success. God gives sense to every zero. <laughs> Rainer Bonker says, I'm a zero. God is number one. Yes. And when he comes to me, I'm not a zero anymore. He makes me something. So just where you are, we're going to pray. And I'm sorry about the time. Can we just open our lives before the Lord this morning? Come. Here where you are, make your heart for you. Say, Heilige Geest, come work in my life. Holy Spirit, I need more of you. Holy Spirit, in my family, in my business, in my sport, in my finance. Lord, I need you in my marriage. I need you in my friendships. Lord, Holy Spirit, I need you. I want to know you. Ek wil u waarachtig ken, Jere.
help me. Lord, your word says we can see you and know you. We can see your works. Ons kan u werke ons kan. And Lord, I bring my life and situation before you. Glorify yourself. In Jesus' name.